Reproductive organs, introduction, the male reproductive organs include the external and internal genitalia. The external genitalia are the penis and the scrotum containing testis, epididymis, and part of ductus deferens. The internal genitalia on each side are, the part of ductus deferens, the seminal vesicle, the ejaculatory ducts, and the prostate. Male reproductive organs. Dissection. The ductus deferens has been seen till the deep inguinal ring in the anterior abdominal wall. Follow it from there as it hooks round the lateral side of inferior epigastric artery to pass backwards and medially across the external iliac vessels to enter into the lesser pelvis. There it crosses the ureter and lies on the posterior surface of urinary bladder medial to the seminal vesicle. Separate the ductus from the adjacent seminal vesicle and trace these till the base of the prostate gland. Follow the deep dorsal vein of the penis and its two divisions into the prostatic venous plexus situated in the angle between the bladder and the prostate. Feel the thickened puboprostatic ligaments. Feel the firm prostate lying just at the neck of the urinary bladder. Identify the levator prostate muscle lying inferolateral to the prostate. This is identifiable by pulling both the bladder and prostate medially. The first part of urethra traverses the prostate. Cut through the anterior one-third of the gland to expose the prostatic urethra. Ductus deferens, synonyms the ductus deferens is called the vas deferens or the deferens duct. Definition The ductus deferens is a thick-walled, muscular tube which transmits spermatozoa from the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. It feels cord-like at the upper lateral part of scrotum. Ductus deferens has a narrow lumen except at the terminal dilated part called the ampulla length. The ductus deferens is about 45 cm long when straightened. Location and course. In it s course the vas lies successively, one within the scrotum along the posterior border of the testis. Two in the inguinal canal as part of the spermatic cord. Three in greater pelvis. Four in the lesser pelvis. Course and relations. One the ductus deferens begins as a continuation of the tail of the epididymis. 2. Along the posterior border of the testis, at first it is very tortuous, but gradually straightens as it ascends along the posterior border of the testis, medial to the epididymis. 3. In the spermatic cord, the ductus deferens lies vertically in posterior part of spermatic cord. It runs upwards to the superficial inguinal ring, and then traverses the inguinal canal. In the vertical part of its course, it can be felt as a cord-like structure within the spermatic cord. 4. In the greater pelvis, at the deep inguinal ring it leaves the spermatic cord, and hooks round the lateral side of the inferior epigastric artery. It then passes backwards and medially, across the external iliac vessels, and enters the lesser pelvis. 5. In the lesser pelvis, the ductus deferens runs downwards and backwards on the lateral pelvic wall, deep to the peritoneum. Here it crosses the obliterated umbilical artery, the obturator nerve and vessels, and the vesicle vessels. It then crosses the ureter, and bends medially at right angles, to enter the sacrogenital fold of peritoneum. Reaching the base of the urinary bladder the ductus runs downwards and forwards medial to the seminal vesicle. Here it approaches the opposite duct and reaches the base of the prostate. At the base of the prostate, the ductus deferens is joined at an acute angle by the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct. 
the part of the ductus lying behind the base of the bladder, is dilated and tortuous, and is known as the ampulla. Arterial supply. The artery to the ductus deferens arises from one of the terminal branches of the superior vesicle artery. It accompanies the ductus to testis, where it anastomoses with the testicular artery. Venous drainage. Veins from the ductus join the vesicle venous plexus which opens into the internal iliac vein. Histology. The lining epithelium of vas deferens is of pseudo-stratified ciliated type. The underlying lamina propria contains elastic fibers. The muscle coat is in three layers, middle is circular and outer and inner layers are of longitudinal type. Adventitia is made of thin connective tissue layer with fine nerves and arterioles. Development. Ductus deferens develops from the mesonephric duct. Inguinal canal. In the vertical part of its course, it can be felt as a cord-like structure within the spermatic cord. Ductus deferens develops from the mesonephric duct. Vasectomy or removing part of the vas deferens is one of the commonest operations being done for purposes of family planning. It is a minor operation which is done under local anesthesia. A median incision is made in the upper part of the scrotum, just below the penis. Through this incision both the deferent ducts are operated. A short segment of each duct is excised, and the cut ends are ligated. The operation is reversible, and recanalization can be done if required. After vasectomy, the testes continue to produce the hormones normally to maintain the male seminal vesicles. These are two lobulated sacs, situated between the bladder and rectum. Each vesicle is about 5 cm long, and is directed upwards and laterally. The lower narrow end forms the duct or the seminal vesicle which joins the ductus deferens to form the ejaculatory duct. The seminal vesicles do not form a reservoir for spermatozoa. Their secretion forms a large part of the seminal fluid. The secretion is slightly alkaline and contains fructose and a coagulating enzyme called the vesiculase. Prostate The prostate is an accessory gland of the male reproductive system. The secretions of this gland add bulk to the seminal fluid along with those of the seminal vesicles and the bulbarethral glands. The prostate is firm in consistency. Its firmness is due to the presence of a dense fibromuscular stroma in which the glandular elements are embedded. In the female the prostate is represented by the perorethral glands of skin. Situation The prostate lies in the lesser pelvis, below the neck of the urinary bladder, behind the lower part of the pubic symphysis and the upper part of the pubic arch. It lies in front of the ampulla of the rectum. Shape, size, and weight. It resembles an inverted cone, measuring about 4 cm transversely at the base, i.e. width, 3 cm vertically, i.e. length, and 2 cm anteroposteriorly or thickness. It weighs about 8 g gross feature. The prostate presents an apex directed downwards, a base, four surfaces, anterior, posterior, and two inferolateral. Apex The apex is directed downwards surrounds the junction of prostatic and membranous parts of posterior urethra. It is separated from the anal canal by the perineal body. Base The base is directed upwards, and is structurally continuous with the neck of the bladder. The junction is marked by a circular groove which lodges venules of the vesicle and prostatic plex uses. Surfaces The anterior surface is narrow and convex from side to side. It lies 2 cm behind the pubic symphysis, with retropubic fat intervening. Its upper part is connected to the pubic bones by the puboprostatic ligaments. The lower end of this surface is pierced by the urethra. The lower end of urethra emerges from this surface anterosuperior to the apex of gland. This surface is composed of fibrous tissue. The posterior surface is triangular in shape. It is flattened from side to side and convex from above downwards. It is separated from the rectum by the fascia of denon villars which is the obliterated rectopsical pouch of peritoneum. Near its upper border it is pierced on each side of the median plane by the ejaculatory duct. This surface lies 4 cm from the anus, and can be easily palpated on digital examination through the rectum. 
the inferolateral surfaces are related to the side walls of pelvis. The anterior fibers of the levator ant enclose the gland in puborethral sling. They are separated from the muscle by a plexus of veins embedded in its sheath. Zones of the prostate 1. The peripheral zone forms 70% of glandular tissue. It is situated posteriorly and is cancer vulnerable. 2. Central zone constitutes 25% of glandular tissue situated posterior to urethral lumen and above the ejaculatory ducts. The two zones are like an egg in its egg cup. The central zone is not involved in disease and is of Wolfian duct origin. 3. There is a periurethral transition zone, 5%, from which benign prostatic hyperplasia arises. The central zone and transition zone constitute central gland. Sphincters related to prostate. In the preprostatic part of urethra there is proximal urethral sphincter mechanism that subserves sexual function of closing during ejaculation. If this sphincter gets resected, retrograde ejaculation occurs. Distal urethral sphincter mechanism is seen at the junction of prostatic and membranous parts of urethra. It is horseshoe shaped, with most of the bulk lying anteriorly. It is distinct from muscle of pelvic floor. Lobes The prostate gland was described as having five lobes initially. These were one anterior and one posterior one. Median and two lateral. These were one anterior, one posterior, one median, and two lateral. As of now, the glandular tissue is divided into three lobes, two lateral and one median. Capsules and ligaments of prostate. True capsule. It is formed by condensation of the peripheral part of the gland. It is fibromuscular in structure and is continuous with stroma of the gland. The lies between true and false capsules venous plexus. False capsule. It lies outside the true capsule and is derived from the endopelvic fascia. Anteriorly, it is continuous with the puboprostatic ligaments. On each side, the prostatic venous plexus is embedded in between false and true capsules. Posteriorly, it is ovuscular, and is formed by the rectovesical fascia of Denon Villers. A pair of medial puboprostatic and a pair of lateral puboprostatic ligaments extend from the false capsule to the back of pubic bone. The medial pair lie near the apex while lateral pair is close to the base. These four ligaments support the gland. Structures within the prostate. One prostatic urethra traverses the gland vertically at the junction of its anterior one-third with the posterior two-thirds. 2. The prostatic utricle is a blind sac directed upwards and backwards. It opens at the middle of the urethral crest. 3. The ejaculatory ducts pass downwards and forwards, and open into the prostatic urethra on each side of the opening of the prostatic utricle. Structural zones of the prostate. Histological sections of the prostate do not show the lobar pattern of the organ. Instead there are two well-defined concentric zones separated by an ill-defined irregular capsule. The zones are absent anteriorly. The intersmaller zone is composed of submucosal glands opening in the prostatic sinuses, and a group of short, simple mucosal glands surrounding the upper part of the urethra. These zones are typically prone to benign hypertrophy. Blood supply. The prostate is supplied by branches from the inferior vesicle, middle rectal and internal pudendal arteries. Branches of these arteries form a large outer or subcapsular plexus, and a small inner or periurethral plexus. The greater part of the gland is supplied by the subcapsular plexus. The veins form a rich plexus around the sides and base of the gland. The plexus communicates with the vesicle plexus and with the internal pudendal vein, and drains into the vesicle and internal iliac veins. Valveless communications exist between the prostatic and vertebral venous plex uses through which prostatic carcinoma can spread to the vertebral column and to the skull. Lymphotic drainage. Lymphatics from the prostate drain chiefly into the internal iliac and sacral nodes, and partly into the external iliac nodes. Nerve supply. The prostatic plexus of nerves is derived from the lower part of the inferior hypogastric plexus. It contains thick nerves and numerous large ganglia. In addition to the prostate and structures within it, the plexus also supplies the senate vesicles, the corpora cavernosa, the corpus spongiosum, 
the membranous and penile parts of the urethria, and the bulbarethral glands. The prostate is supplied by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. The gland contains numerous endorgans, impulses from which are relayed to the lower three lumbar and upper sacral segments. Secretions of the prostate are produced and discharged after stimulation of both the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves. Age changes in prostate. 1. At birth the prostate is small in size, and is made up mainly of stroma in which a simple duct system is embedded. During the first six weeks after birth the epithelium of the ducts and of the prostatic utricle undergoes hyperplasia and squamous metaplasia, under the stimulation of maternal ostrogans. Thereafter, up to the age of nine years changes are negligible. Between nine and fourteen years, the duct system becomes more elaborate by formation of side buds, and the gland slowly increases in size. 2. If puberty the male hormones bring about rapid changes in the gland. In about one year it becomes double its prepubertal size due to rapid growth of the follicles and condensation and reduction of the stroma. 3. From 20 to 30 years there occurs marked proliferation of the glandular elements with enfolding of the glandular epithelium into the lumen of the follicles, making them irregular. 4. From 30 fo 45 years the size of the prostate remains constant, and involution starts. The epithelial enfoldings gradually disappear and amyloid bodies increase in number. 5. From 45 to 50 years the prostate is either enlarged called the benign hypertrophy or reduced in size called the senile atrophy. Histology Prostate is a fibromuscular glandular organ. The seroma comprises collagen fibers and smooth fibers. The columnar epithelium of asini is folded. The lumen may contain small colloid masses called amyloid bodies. The prostatic urethra, lined by transitional epithelium may also be seen. Development Prostate develops from a series of endodermal buds from the lining of primitive urethra and the adjacent portion of urogenital sinus, during first three months of intrauterine me. The surrounding mesenchyme condenses to form the stroma of the gland. Prostatic utricle develops in the region of malarian tubercle similar to vagina in females. The central zone of glandular tissue is of Wolfian duct system. Senile enlargement of prostate, after 50 years of age the prostate is often enlarged due to benign hypertrophy or due to the formation of an adenoma. This causes retention of urine due to distortion of the urethra. Enlargement of the median lobe not only projects into bladder, but forms a sort of valve over the internal urethral orifice, so that more patient strains, more it obstructs the passage. Urine passes when the patient relaxes. Digital examination of the rectum is very helpful in the diagnosis of an enlarged prostate. Removal of such a prostate called prostatectomy relieves the urinary obstruction. During removal, the enlarged gland is enucleated, leaving behind both the capsules and venous plexus between them. The prostate can be removed through bladder, transvesical, through prostatic capsule, retropubic, or through perineum and fascia of Denonvillers, perineal approach, or through urethra, TUR, transurethral resection. Inflammation of the prostate is referred to as prostatitis. It may be acute or chronic. Acute prostatitis is secondary to gonococcal urethritis and chronic prostatitis may be secondary to tuberculous infection of epididymis, seminal vesicles, and the bladder. Benign prostatic hyperplasia occurs in periurethral zone. Carcinoma of prostate occurs in peripheral zone. The prostate is a common site of carcinoma. It usually occurs after the age of 50-55 years. In addition to urinary obstruction, it causes pain in perineum, low backache, or sciatica. Rectal examination reveals an irregular hard and fixed prostate. Metastatic spread occurs to the vertebral column through the valveless connections between the prostatic and vertebral venous plex uses. Vertebral system of veins. Synonym. Batson S. Plexus. The vertebral venous plexus assumes importance in cases of one carcinoma of prostate causing secondaries in the vertebral column and the skull. Two chronic empyema causing brain abscess by septic emboli. Anatomy of Batson's plexus. Vertebral venous system is made up of a valveless, 
complicated network of veins with a longitudinal pattern. It runs parallel to an anastomosis with the superior and inferior vena cavae. This network has three intercommunicating subdivisions. One epidural plexus lies in vertebral canal outside the dura mater. The plexus consists of a postcentral and a prelaminar portion. Each portion is drained by two vessels. It drains the structures in the vertebral canal, and is itself drained at regular intervals by segmental veins, vertebral, posterior intercostal, lumbar and lateral sacral. To the plexus within the vertebral bodies, it drains backwards into the epidural plexus, and anterolaterally into the external vertebral plexus. Three external vertebral venous plexus, it consists of anterior vessels in front of the vertebral bodies, and the posterior vessels on the back of vertebral arches and adjacent muscles. It is drained by segmental veins. Suboccipital plexus of veins is a part of the external plexus. It lies on and in the suboccipital triangle. It receives the occipital veins of scalp, is connected with the transverse sinus by emissary veins, and drains into the subclavian veins. Communications and Implications The vertebral system of veins communicates, one above with the intracranial venous sinuses, two below with the pelvic veins, portal vein, and cable system of veins. The veins are valveless and the blood can flow in them in either direction. An increase in intrathoracic or intraabdominal pressure, such as is brought about by coughing and straining, may cause blood to flow in the plexus away from the heart, either upwards or downwards. Such periodic changes in venous pressure are clinically important because they spread tumors or infections. Thus the cells from pelvic, abdominal, thoracic, and breast tumors may enter the venous system, and may ultimately lodge in the vertebrae, the spinal cord, skull, or brain. The common primary sites causing secondaries in vertebrae are the breast, prostate, and kidney. Vertebral tuberculosis is similarly explained. Prostate comprises three lobes, one median, one anterior, one posterior and two lateral. Benign hypertrophy of prostate occurs in the median lobe, carcinoma occurs in the peripheral zone of prostate. Prorectal examination is an important examination to judge the prostate, or anal canal pathology. Prostatic adenoma is enucleated, both the capsules are left behind in the patient. Cancer of prostate may metastasis to distant parts through vertebral venous plexus.